Um, okay, so um, uh, welcome to uh, this evening's so I Center of Taiwan Studies uh, seminar, our second uh, one of the, uh, the week. Um, I'm delighted to welcome back uh, Professor Paul Jonhal, who is uh, here on Tuesday doing his, um, his first lecture that looks at the topic of uh, indigenous uh, voting uh, behavior. And today he's moving on to a topic that, strangely enough, my students have found really exciting. Like this year, uh, quite a few of them have written papers on um, uh, electoral systems. And to, to get a sense of, of how exciting your, your talk is, I've had uh, people emailing me questions from, from Taijo. Uh, and I'll, uh, when we come to the Q&A session, you have, you have, you have questions from, from distance. Okay, so uh, tonight's session is part of our contemporary uh, Taiwan Indigenous Studies um, uh, series that's sponsored by the, uh, the Shunyi um, uh, Museum, which uh, what we're trying to do in this, in this project is to uh, do a series of lectures that look at modern day issues that affect Taiwan's uh, Indigenous uh, peoples. And we'll be developing this over the next uh, next year, and hopefully, eventually, we'll have a, uh, a book project uh, out of this. Professor Ball is someone who's uh, given a number of SOAS um, uh, talks uh, over the years. His first one was back um, uh, 12 years ago, yep. when he was still a, a PhD student at uh, Hull. Um, at, at Hull, he started off um, in Southeast Asian studies, and then moved to um, um, uh, political science. And that was the, uh, uh, the route that he, he's developed uh, since. For his PhD, he looked at um, democratization of Singapore and, and Taiwan. Uh, but since uh, he's uh, graduated, he's shifted his, his focus to look at uh, the politics of Taiwan's indigenous uh, people. So he's looked at this from a number of uh, angles. Um, it's, a top, it's a topic that Taiwanese political scientists have tended to uh, neglect, partly because so much of political science in Taiwan is focused on statistics. Um, while statistics um, have only limited use when we look at Taiwan's uh, indigenous people, although as we saw on, on Tuesday, uh, it is possible to bring statistics into, uh, uh, into this, this topic. Um, so in many ways, uh, Professor Bao is a kind of exceptional political scientist uh, in Taiwan. He combines both uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, angles to look at uh, indigenous uh, people. So a topic that's really been um, mainly populated by sociologists, anthropologists. Um, uh, so he's, he's do, does really welcome wo uh, work, and it's work that's uh, again received quite a bit of attention among our students um, here. Okay, um, on that note, let's give uh, Professor Bauer a big uh, SOAS um, welcome back. So as time will study. <laughs> Over to you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, I think I, I, have, I have to spend a little bit of longer time to for this talk. Today we are going. This is the part of the, will be part of the book project. Uh, will be probably one chapter of that book. So I'm talking about the electoral system and the indigenous political representation in Taiwan. Uh, I will divide it into five parts. Well, oh no, sorry, four parts. Basically, I think I think uh, uh, the main. I'm talking about the behavior is influenced by institution. So about the political representation or the voting behavior in Taiwan for indigenous people, is but it's quite shifted by. The institution. So I was started from the indigenous people and the indigenous peoples. I explain what is the indigenous people, this idea in Taiwan. Then secondly, I go into the electoral system in Taiwan. They go for go for uh, indigenous voting behavior. Finally, we go to the indigenous political representation. Uh, indigenous people and the indigenous peoples in Taiwan. Taiwan society usually regard indigenous people as a whole. And we thought we can't distinguish who they are. Well. So indigenous people is not a single race. In fact, there are at least 16 different indigenous races legally recognized by the government. Actually, we have more different races on this island. Totally, we have around 650, sorry, 
559,000 indigenous people in Taiwan. And uh, the largest number is from Amis. Uh, I use the red one that means the Amis, Kavalan and the Sakizaya, they both, they have the, uh, sorry, and the Puyuma, they were planned indigenous people. Planned indigenous people. The old black one is the mountain indigenous people. Green one, that means some of land might be quarter by one and uh, half of like uh say yeah they are mountain people mountain indigenous people or plain indigenous people so plain indigenous people if we have about the 46 47 percent and the mountain indigenous people about the uh, 50 53 percent so uh Administrative identity is inherent, can't be changed. Administrative identity is not determined by your race, but by where your ancestors live in the Japanese colonial area. You may change your administration identity once if your parents are both indigenous people, but the one is plain indigenous and the other one is mountain indigenous. Then you can choose when you are 20. Then you, are choose, then you can choose which one you want to inherit. So since more than half of indigenous people have moved to metropolis, we now have certain different indigenous people, metropolitan indigenous. Uh, these, kind of, these people is not recognized by the government, but their behavior is totally different, quite different to those people who still live in tribe. So if, we were, if in the eyes of government, only two different indigenous people are on the island, but actually, we have so many different indigenous peoples. We talk about the electoral system in Taiwan, and uh, I'm talking about is the dual is the dual democratic system in Taiwan. Because in Taiwan, the indigenous people they use totally different. What I would say is a different electoral system, like the normal ordinary people. Now in Taiwan, the, for the ordinary Han people, we vote for our MP. Use the system. Exactly, sent to basically exactly sent to Ukai. So one constituency to elect one MP, only one seat. But for the indigenous people, elect, uh, for indigenous elections, we still use the the old one is a single non-transferable voting system. That means the entire Taiwan uh, was divided into two constituencies. One is the mountain indigenous people constituency. Sorry, one is the mountain indigenous constituency, the other one is plant indigenous constituency. So the concept, which constituency you below is is according to is based on your identity. Is it is based on your identity? So then we have a two role, two electoral votes, and the guarantee. We guarantee indigenous people you definitely can be elected into parliament. But you will be limited to you have only a limited number, three plain indigenous, uh, three indigenous MP and three mountain indigenous MP. So about, uh, I'm not quite sure about do I have to spend too much time on this one. Uh, single non-transferable voting system might be not you might not be familiar with it, but since you are studying about Taiwan, probably you know. Okay, I just quickly uh, do this quickly. Single non transferable voting system or SNTV is an electoral system used in the multi uh, member constituency elections. In any elections, each voter casts one vote for one candidate in a multi candidate race for multiple rate offices. Posts are filled by the candidates with the most votes, thus the three seats constituency and the three candidates receiving the largest number of the votes would win office. SNTV can be used with non-partisan ballots. Personally, I think SNTV is the most interesting in the electoral system. Mm. It's because uh, it's not just about candidates. And, uh, 
and the party or employee rules. And the voters, they all have some kind of strategic voting behavior. So this kind of system is quite interesting and uh, contribute a lot of the a lot of the scholars because okay, okay, we can contribute the papers about this one. Okay, so and sometimes it will happen. Uh, basically this part I would I directly call the Wikipedia because I don't know how to uh, not not either. As I easy to explain. So if we have five candidates from three different parties, and uh, that is the vote that we see. So obviously, if we the CDE, they win the, the uh, sorry, they win uh, the winning they, they win the seats. They win the seats. But the two are from the Z party, and the one is from one is from Y party. But uh, but obviously, Y party get more votes than Z party. But the seat, the seat, the Y party get one seat, Z party got two seats, the X party got nothing, X party got nothing. So for the party, the candidate's interest, the candidate's interest and the party interest is conflict. <coughs> it's basically a conflict. For candidate, of course, he wants to get as high, uh, sorry, as many votes as he, they can. For the party, they want to they want to distribute the vote equally to ensure as many as their candidate can win. So under SNTV, under SNTV, if you are candidates, if you are candidates, who is your enemy? Usually, it's not the other party's candidate. Usually, it's the, the candidate from your own party. So SNTV usually uh, usually result in. Uh, Factionalism uh, within the party because you usually fight with your own commodores. Okay, so it's potentially for technical voting. The potential for technical voting in the SNTV system is large. Receiving only one vote, the rational voter must only vote for a candidate that has a chance of winning, but they will not win two by too great a margin thus taking votes anyway from party colleagues. How to say that? For voter, before you cast your ballot, you are thinking you, you are going to think about it. Do I waste my vote? So you want to vote for those people they don't have chance, don't have they don't have winning chance. But you at the same time you don't want to vote vote for that candidate they may win too much, too many votes. So you will think about which one. They may have a chance to win, but need your vote. So during the SNTV, we usually have a very strange situation will happen. All candidates to say, I'm in danger. <laughs> I need your vote. If you are too confident, if you, if you are a candidate too confident, usually you will be the one to lose the election. Because your vote will be transferred automatically by your supporters because they want to help others to win. So this is also great opportunity for technical nominations with the parties nominating candidates similar to other sorry, their opponents' candidates in order to split the, the vote. For the party, they also have technical nomination. For example, uh, for example, a party nominated a very powerful or very popular candidate, a female, a female, female candidate. I'm the B party chairman. I don't have anyone, I don't have anyone, any candidate like you, like this female. So sometimes I will nominate a, a candidate. We usually call it bomb. Suicide bomb. <laughs> Similar to this female, they may just have the higher education background. They are both female, they, are, they have received a higher education degree, and uh, they may from the same township. Very similar to you, very similar to this candidate. And uh, for a big party, I nominated this candidate. The purpose, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want this candidate to win. 
I just want this candidate to split the other candidate's vote. And uh, maybe I can reduce the A party's candidate's winning chance. And uh, so, it is, it is, it is reasonable, it, sorry, it is rational for a party in, uh, sorry, at a three-seat three constituency to nominate four or five candidates because some of them, their nomination is not for winning but for bumping another candidate. Okay, so SNTV can also result in the complicated intra-party dynamic because the uh, SNTV system, a candidate must not only run against the candidates from the other party, but also against the part, uh, candidate from their own party. I think, uh, but the, main, the major enemy is from your own party. So parties must ensure their supporters evenly distribute their votes among the party's candidates. To be frank with my master's thesis, uh, the, my thesis about the master degree is talking about the, the, this, this strategy. So then we go to the plain indigenous electoral role and uh, mountain indigenous electoral roads. The island was divided into two indigenous constituencies, plain indigenous constituency and the mountain, in, mountain indigenous constituency. So which which constituency you belong is determined by where you are existing living in the Japanese colonial era. Uh, era. Uh, once your ethnic identity, once your uh, ethnic identity, oh sorry, has been decided, it is almost impossible to change. So therefore, it can be seen family or tribe member belong to different constituencies. That is very possible. Husband and wife, you belong to different. Uh, constituency and uh, mother and the son belong to different uh, constituency. So as a candidate, as a candidate, you can only run for the post of design the constituency. So that is a very funny or ironic thing is, for example, we just mentioned a, a group, a uh, think a group called Baiwan. Baiwan, mainly they are Many they are mountain indigenous people, but in Taidong Pong, in Taidong County, the Taiwan in Taidong County, they are all they basically they are plain sorry the plain indigenous people. So Taiwan was divided into the North Taiwan, South Taiwan, and the East Taiwan. East Taiwan is the basically they are plain indigenous people, and they never have a chance to have their own representatives, never. Because for the plain indigenous people, the majority is mixed. Majority is mixed, and uh, gradually they are ignored. They are ignored and neglected, and uh, they would they appeal to the government. They say that we are belong to we are all by one, so we should be we should we should be incorporated or be re we should they should be mountain indigenous people. <coughs> But once the government agree, once the government agree that, then the government will going to face a lot of different situations, different difficulties. Because the entire system will be, I would say, the entire system will be destroyed. The entire system will be destroyed. Yeah. And in the past, in the past uh, about 10 to 10 years, we just mentioned that Mayor Bihar, that's the uh, armies and uh, in, is also an indigenous politician. And uh, I cooperate, I, we, we work together and appeal to the government. We say we want to abolish this kind of the, uh, this system. Indigenous, uh, sorry, the mountain and the plain indigenous people, which we feel this is unnecessary. Uh, unfortunately, our government still insists, or they just they just, they, just, they just don't want to listen to us because of, mainly because of the politicians. Once the electoral system was, once the election system is changed, so they are going to face the new situation and they don't want to change. They don't want to change. So uh, to, under this kind of system, so we have a guaranteed but isolated indigenous political participation. 
Central and the local gov uh, local legislative body reserve seats for plan and the mountain indigenous people. Uh, for example, the street plan indigenous, indigenous MPCs and uh, three mountain indigenous MPCs are reserved for indigenous people. However, unless the political parties place indigenous candidates on their PR list and win, the maximum number of the indigenous MP in the parliament will be six. But in this, in, now in our parliament, now in the legislative year, we have eight. We have eight because the, because the two parties Two parties nominated their uh, nominated indigenous people on their PR list. However, six out of one hundred thirteen says indigenous MP will be the minority forever. They will be minority forever. They can't give up their identity to run for general parliamentary seats. So you do have voice. You do have a voice on the floor, but you are always an isolated minority. And what happened in the, what happened in our in our parliament is quite strange because indigenous people they have their own representatives, and they usually speak for indigenous interests. And we can see on the floor, we can see on in the parliament, some of them are indigenous indigenous, some of them are not. So when I, if I were indigenous, then I speak about the indigenous issue. All other all other MPs, they will listen to me and uh, no question about me. And they just keep silent. So usually, I talk about the indigenous, talk about the indigenous issues. Indigenous, indigenous MP, they can have, they have, they can exercise. They, their influence is much higher than others. But they also have another problem is, if we are talking about the general issue, and the indigenous people would like to say something, indigenous MP would like to say something, other MP will say, that is not your business. It do happen. It do happen. And that is my another research I, I just studied about this. So it's quite, it, it sounds like we elect the indigenous people, indigenous MP was elect, they were elected, but only speak for, only speak for indigenous issue. But the lay were also MP. They are also MPs. They, theoretically, they should be able to. They should be allowed to speak for all other all, all issues. But they are isolated. <coughs> they are basically isolated. So indigenous voting behavior. On the island, indigenous election is a game for indigenous people themselves. They can this their own game. The participants are all indigenous. So I call it the concentric uh, zone model. Family was the core, then broader relationship, my our relatives. Then we go to tribe, go to a race, then go to an administrative division. So what is this? This is the relationship the how close or how far you and the, the candidate. They vote, the indigenous people usually vote to see if they are if the candidates are our family members. Or we have the same bro do we have any broader relationship? If we don't have these two, then we can think about do we from the same tribe? If we don't have this kind of relationship, then we go to do we, do we belong to the same race? Are you our miss? Are you by one? Then, if later we, we still don't have this one, then we see, do we live in the same administration division? If you don't have, if you don't have all of these, definitely, okay, 90%, I will say, 90% of the opportunity, you won't get the vote. You won't get the vote. So relationship is always the most important one for the voting behavior. So for, for in Taiwan, in Taiwan as for the indigenous election, that's quite interesting. It's, we, we say that is uh, part of the reason why indigenous, indigenous politics is ignored or being neglected by the Taiwanese uh, political science community. Because it, it's not funny, it's not interesting. Everything basically you can predict. You, before the election, 
you might already know the result. You might already know the result. For example, for the plain indigenous election, you in the from the 19, I think it's from the 1950 till now. Every used to be very every three years. Now it's every four years when we have one election, one legislative election. In the past, and so it's the, about in the half century, more than 50 years, more than 50 years. Only one candidate, only one Puyuma MP was elected. But all of all other seats were won by armies. Were won by armies. So if you are not armies, don't think about that you will get, get you will win. And the why this Puyuma candidate can win? That is because of her father. Later, later I will uh, I will spend some time to introduce her. So the the relationship is always the most important one for voting behavior, and the authentic voting is common or can be said as a decisive factor. So the role of the political party. For myself, I'm a Han professor. I'm a Han people, and uh, I'm a friend. I'm a friend of Indian people. That's it. So. When I go to a tribe or I go to meet indigenous people, they will be very polite because basically they respect the professors and uh, they know I'm doing the indigenous, indigenous politics research. But once, uh, I also have a nan, have an indigenous nan, um, Dahu. That is the, that is the Punun nan, Punun nan. And it's recognized by the Islam Huan family, now a Punun. So I have the double identity. I have double identity. In blood, I'm not indigenous people. But when I go to the Bruno area, I belong to the East One family. And they will know, they will they know this. I will, I will call myself Dahu. When I call myself Dahu, I will receive the totally different, totally different treatment. Uh, I will be regarded as the that I would regard as a part of this family, and uh, I even I even have a right to participate in the family meeting to handle. Okay, uh, I can speak in the. I would say that they still have the gender issue. Uh, oh, usually female they, have, they don't have the right. They don't have the right to talk about the family issue, and but because I am, I'm male. And uh, I was recognized by this family, so I can represent this family to I can represent this family to speak in the tribe meeting. I can speak in a tribe meeting. Uh, but uh, I have I have still have a little problem because I'm not a good hunter. Uh, <laughs> uh, this part is still be criticized, still because by other <laughs> the other male uh, male members. So, but why I can be why I can be recognized as a as a, a Bidun? Because you must be seen. You must be seen. Uh, no matter who you are, you must be seen and the land be recognized as a part of land. Blood is important, but the recognition is even more important. So for anyone, for anyone, if you want to be their friend, you want to be indigenous people's friend, or you want to be recognized as part of land, you must present yourself on any tribe occasions. So what is my story is that my story is that I went to the I went to a tribe and uh, to be frankly I'm not good at the construction. But I go with land, I go with land, we go to construct the the house, a traditional house. And uh, I was sent to the hospital. At the very first day, because I fall on the, the mountain, <laughs> because I don't used to that, I don't used to that, and uh, we're going to we 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 go to, we we bring we brought a lot of tubes, we because we want to connect the uh, we want to fix the water water system, the water system. Then 
I just fall down and they send to the hospital. And, but I think that is the very good start, beginning. A very, very good beginning because they think that is that was because uh, they didn't organize, they didn't pray to the ancestors, and uh, at, at that evening, at the evening they, they organized the uh, an event and uh, pray to uh, and pray to the ancestors, uh, indigenous ancestors, and to see and to say. Would you like? Uh, would you like to recognize and accept these people to be part of our friend? Oh no, to be our friend. And uh, I don't know how. I don't know what is the result. But obviously, the ancestors accept me. Uh, after that day, after that day, I visited this family. Uh, probably once a month. Probably once a month. And. Uh, Seven or eight months later, seven or eight months later, I was accepted. When the when the family leader, when in the when the family leaders, family leaders birthday party, okay, call it a party, quite strange, but it is the birthday party, and uh, I I don't I didn't prepare, I don't know, basically I know nothing, and uh, suddenly the family the family leader announced announced that I have a new name. I knew that it's Dahu. And uh, to be frankly, I'm still a little bit, a little bit confusing why I'm Dahu. Uh, and after that, after that, uh, I immediately to take over all about uh, their family business, <laughs> or family things. Uh, so you must present yourself on any tribal occasion. The reason why I talk about this is about it's very it's very important to voting behavior. The party, political party, political party want to if you want to have influence on the tribe, on foreign indigenous people, any party can build an organization and penetrate into indigenous society. You can build, which means a party representative can present him or. But usually it's him, not herself. Himself on most tribal occasions, the party will be seen and accepted. Will be seen and accepted. For example, if I'm a KMD member and then what I was appointed as a representative for a certain area, and then what is my job? My job is going to present myself. I'm going to participate in all all occasions. Someone's marriage, someone's Someone's, uh, someone's going to marry, then you show yourself. Someone's son is, getting, uh, is going to school, you might accompany with, with him to go to, go to a school. So in, uh, in every indigenous township, can be appoints one indigenous coordinate. This coordinate will be, will be recruited from the left township. Basically, it's from the left township. If Kennedy find no suitable one, the candidate will recruit one coordinator with the same ethnic background. In a, for example, in Amin's area, I will never appoint. I will never appoint a Puyuma coordinator. That is true, and that you will not do so. You will not do so. You will definitely recruit a point. So you will definitely appoint Amin's. And the better, the better way is from the same township. So they. This coordinator basically is your friend and your neighbors. Your neighbors. So, for example, Dayang Ata, Ata Township will have a Dayang KMT coordinator. He is better to be the born and the grow up at this township. Otherwise, he must be a town. Uh, a Dayang. It's much more like a church. It's much more like a church. In any tribe, they definitely have a church. And uh, if the if the if the priest if the priest is not from the same as the group, they usually they can't they can't recruit a lot of believers and and uh, then there will be a mistake. There will definitely be a mistake. So for KMT in the past the half centuries, the CAM, uh, half century the KMT built this kind of party organization in all township uh, in this township. They have these coordinates. And these coordinates, they present themselves on any occasions. So that means we are friends. 
and you represent, you represent the KMT, that means I won't go to support the KMT. I'm not going to support the KMT because I'm supporting you. I'm supporting you. So this coordinator, you, they usually have this post, they serve it, they, they serve for this post for the whole life. For the whole life. So KMT was KMT is the only one party do this. Why other why other parties don't do that? Uh, it should not be surprised that the KMT dominated in this politics because the other parties they don't they don't do this. For example, for the DPP, the, now the ruling party, the ruling party why they don't do so? It's quite strange because they in the past a uh, uh, from. Actually, from the year 2000 to year 2008, that is, that was Taiwan was under DPP DPP uh, governance. Then they started, they started to 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 build their own indigenous party branches, but they failed. They failed. For indigenous people, if you want to, if you want to develop indigenous party organizations. You must spend a lot of time. A st really, a lot of time. I, I, I do, I do my indigenous research. This year is the is the tenth year. In the past ten years, uh, I visit, I visit, I visit tribes quite often. But I, and I was recognized as an indigenous people. I was recognized as Dahu. It's last year. I spent nine years. I spent nine years on tribes, on tribes, and that was recognized by Ben Bruno. One major reason is not is not just about my time, and also is my student, my PhD <laughs> student, because she is belong she belong to his family, and she guarantee she guarantee. I'm honest, I'm truly, I'm truly, I'm saying that I have an indigenous heart. <laughs> <laughs> she guarantee, she guarantee that. Otherwise, I think I, I, I may need another 10 years. <laughs> I may need a, another 10 years, then I will be recognized. Otherwise. <clears throat> so, this is time consuming, but only 2.3% of the popular vote. Indigenous people is of the population size is 2.3%. 2.3%. Most of other of basically apart from except 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 the KMT, except KMT, other parties they don't they don't really care about this one. Because because even you you won, even you even you win this popular vote, it doesn't mean you can win. You can win the general election, and uh, for the same energy, for same time, do you have the same? If you spend the same, uh, the same kind on other constituencies, you can get more. You get more. The body of the metropolitan indigenous body uh, is in a city, but here, oh sorry, this is another one. We just mentioned about the metropolitan indigenous people. So a lot of the indigenous people they move from they move they move to they move to the city, and then they register their household in the city. In the city, we assume before we assume they should behave like normal or ordinary people, ordinary Taiwanese people, because they live in the live in the city. They have the job like us. They have a job like us. But it's quite strange. It's quite strange. Indigenous uh, the metropolitan indigenous people, they may their body may own the city, may in the city. But their soul is definitely in the tribe. The metropolitan indigenous people they visit, they go back to their hometown quite often. That is necessary. Because if you don't get if you don't go back to your your hometown, your own tribe, you will be forgotten. You will be forgotten. 
Oh, sorry, for God. Uh, for God. You will be for God. You must be seen. You must be seen in the child. You must be in the child. So the metropolitan indigenous voter will be mobilized by her, his or her family members who still stay at the tribe when the election is coming. So the voting behavior we used to be we saw to the metropolitan, metro, metro, uh, metropolitan indigenous people, the indigenous voters, they may have a different voting behavior, but actually not. It's a sent to, it's totally sent to uh, the other indigenous people. So the, then finally we go to indigenous political representation. Since aesthetic voting behavior makes the larger races being able to win seats. So since 1950, plain indigenous MPs are always a miss, with one exception, Chen Yin of Puyuma. Chen Yin now is the MP and uh, her father, her father was the was a KMT lead, was a KMT leader, and uh, her father was the only one indigenous uh, magistrate in our history, in our history. The reason why her father, her father can win, her father could win, because KMT nominate, KMT nominated her father as the as the magistrate uh, candidate, and uh, paved away, paved away paper away to the magistrate's office. Year 2000, year 2000 when, the, when we have a power shifting and the, the, ruling, party, the ruling party was changed to, was changed to DPP, her father immediately joined DPP. And the once again be nominated as the, 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 the chairman of the Council of Indigenous Affairs. And at the same year, at the same year, Chen Ying ran for, ran for the MBC, MBC. And the entire Council of Indigenous Affairs become her, her logistic support. Basically, uh, all, the entire, uh, entire Council started to help Chen Ying to run for the to run for this office, and uh, the government budget is directed into little scandal, little scandal. But uh, and uh, her father was jailed because of this thing, because of this matter. But anyway, because of this one, Chen Yin Chen won the seat. Chen Yin won the seat for four years, four years time, and uh, another four years, uh, Chen Yin was uh, nominated by the camp, uh, DPP. I'm the PR list of the PR list. For the mountain indigenous people, MPs are always too uh, young. Oh, sorry, too uh, young. But when we say uh, when we say young, also we are mentioning about the Sanjay and the Drugu, Drugu. because before year two thousand, uh, before year two thousand, Dayang was have three parts. Was three is it, com is it combined? Is that combined? We, we think Sejek and Jirugu, they are part of Dayang. We say the government, the government, the government say so. So traditionally, all these three races, we, they are regarded as the Dayang family. And the two, well, two were elected from Dayang. And the one is from Baiwan, and from Baiwan. So a Puno MP was seen when the, the number of seats of the mountain in his MP was four. That is from the 19, uh, 19, 1995, no, uh, 1995 to the year 2008. 2008. At the moment, because at the moment we our the size of our parliament is 225. Sorry, 225 seats. So at the moment we are we we are located the. the Indigenous, indigenous cities, four for the plain indigenous and four for, uh, four for mountain, mountain indigenous people. And at that moment, we have a one Bruno MP. One Bruno MP. However, 16 races, but only three or four races, have their own representatives. 
to low stresses without their own representatives, do their interests be ignored? Actually, this is the main reason. My very first uh, uh, academic article talk about the indigenous, indigenous politics is talking about this issue. Uh, before I wrote, before I before I wrote the letter, letter paper, almost everyone in, ta I'm ta in, in Taiwan, they talk when they talk about, they saying the the it will have a problem. The indigenous in, the indigenous people, if they don't have their own representatives, their interests will be harmed, and then no one speak for them. No one speak for them. Uh, I don't believe it. I really don't. I don't. I really don't believe it. But I have no evidence. I have no evidence. So how do I do? Uh, how did I do? I started. Uh, I collected. Uh, the question is: uh, Do these indigenous legislators represent their respective constituencies, or they speak for the all Taiwan indigenous people, or just for their own for their own people? So affected by the sorry before I so I I, I raise my I, I ask myself I ask myself this question so how do I prove it how do I prove it so I collect the data from the from the debating on the sorry the debating on the floor and the questions on the floor and also their proposal the proposal their, their bill proposal. And then finally, I found out, affected by uh, electoral competition, the indigenous legislators tended to respond to the electoral interest. However, to these indigenous legislators, the ref the electorate is not confined to the voters registered in their respective constituency, but all indigenous voters. In other words, Taiwan's indigenous legislator regard itself as a as a representative of all indigenous peoples. Why? If you are mountain, if you are mountain in this in this MP, you can you only need mountain indigenous voters support. Right? But the problem is if you support me, probably probably your your family members are plain indigenous people. They can't be divided. Because uh, this is very likely, for example, for Taiwan, for the Taiwan people, you are in mainly Taiwan people are mountain indigenous people, and I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a MP elected from Taiwan. But the part of uh, my fam uh, part of Taiwan, they are plain indigenous people, so I I also needed to look after their interests. I also needed to look after their interests. This current situation is quite common, and the, the establishment, uh, establishment of council of indigenous people and the transformation of indigenous social movement are two crucial factors to affect the indigenous legislative representative behavior. This is another one. This is another one. Uh, used to be we don't have a council of indigenous people. We don't have this organization, but in the nineteen in the 1996, in the 1996, at the very moment, KMT was the ruling party, has a very weak majority. We, they still have the, they still have a majority in the parliament, but very weak. What if, if this indigenous indigenous MP decided to support the DPP, and uh, the KMT will no longer enjoy the majority. So at the later moment, at the later, at the later year, at the later year, these indigenous MPs they request, they they demand, they demand to establish, to to establish the, the council of indigenous people. At the, at the later moment, at that time, mountain indigenous people, a mountain indigenous MP and the plain indigenous MP, they cooperated each other, <coughs> and uh, the indigenous indigenous social movement. That is also that, that is also very important because the indigenous social movement 
they don't say, they don't speak they, they don't say you are mountain indigenous people and the or 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 you are or the plain indigenous people. They are fighting for the same issue and they want to get the same they have the common purpose and they share the common interest. We share the common interest. We used to be we don't call indigenous people indigenous. We don't call them. We say you are mountain people. That is quite strange. Mountain, mountain people, and the plain mountain people. I, I really don't know why we use that name, but that's quite strange. So for the in, for the indigenous social movement, the very first issue, they, the, the, the very first one they demand is going to change the name, official name, from the mountain people to indigenous, to indigenous. And the least also bring the mountain and the plain indigenous people. They, they become together. So the number of the content of the bill proposed by indigenous legislators are highly affected by the political party and the constituency they belong to. Mountain indigenous legislators are more active. Land, plain land, uh, plain land indigenous legislator and uh, indigenous legislator elected from the proportional presentation system. Furthermore, the legislator of non-partisan subject union sorry, are more active than other political parties. Uh, I think I have some problems. It's not that one. Yeah, uh, let me say independent. Yeah. Probably it's independent. Ah, independent. Okay. independent. Let me independent. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm talking about the, why the mountain, why the mountain indigenous MP they are more active, because they are more focused. Mountain indigenous people they basically live in the same area, in a mountain area. Most of their vote, their, their voters live in the mountain area, so they speak. They, what do they care about is the is the is the road, road built, road building. It's about the water supply. It's about, it's about uh, some subsidies, some subsidies. But for the plain indigenous people, that will be another issue. Because they usually live with the Han people, ordinary people. For example, if you go to the east, east Taiwan, go to Hualien or Taidong, we also call they are indigenous area. For example, Hualien city, Hualien city might be the largest indigenous township. But unfortunately, even you go to Hualien, Hualien city, two thirds of the population they were Han people. Less than one third, one less than one third they are indigenous. So that will be a problem. And uh, okay, so we can provide some provide some statistics number. Ninety three point three percent of the bill are proposed by ten indigenous legislators from the year, I think it is uh, 1992. From uh, 1992 to year 2012. I say 10 indigenous legislators, that means that 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 most of them get re-elected. Mm. Which emphasizes on indigenous education. When they, this 93.3% 90, uh, of the bills are talking about indigenous education. Economic development in indigenous area, autonomy of indigenous people, reserve land ownership and the natural resource management and the compensation. For indigenous, for indigenous MPs, what do they care about? They care about this. And they only speak for indigenous interests. And then they they don't care about or they can say that. They don't care about what else happen in on the island. For example, if we are talking about the cross cross strait relationship, no, they don't talk about this. Talk about uh, talk about economic development for example, uh, infrastructure infrastructure construction on, on the west coast. They don't care about that. About but what they care about is about education. Indigenous education. Economic development in indigenous area, autonomy of the indigenous peoples, reserve land ownership, and the natural resource management and the compensation. So, do they care about the nuclear plant? 
power station? No, they don't care about that. They care about the, the nuclear waste. Because they usually, we, you know, in Taiwan, they, they, they play, we, we, we dump, not dump, we, we store, we store the nuclear waste on the Lanyu Island. That is the indigenous area. So, at, the, at that place, we care about this one. Indigenous people care about this one. Indigenous people don't care about the where you build, where you, where you build the nuclear, nuclear plant, nuclear power station. They don't care about this one. But the, this is definitely not an indigenous area. So the current the electoral system doesn't guarantee a descriptive representation of all indigenous people, but actually provide a substantive representation to them. Because all these indigenous MPs, they speak for all indigenous peoples. They are not speak for the individual, individual races. The only one MP speak for indigenous, they are his, her own. Her own race is Chen Ying. In, in her four years' time, Hangzhou, Hangzhou's, Hangzhou's, Hangzhou's debating or Hangzhou's speech, she mentioned once is going to build, going to build a traditional, traditional house for the cultural, for, for cultural reason, medical program. That is the for the young young Puyuma people. They can get in together, and the, the the teenagers, of course, male. They they will be let building to 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 accept the military training, traditional military training. That is the only one. They. Uh, a Puyuma, a Puyuma MP speak for Puyuma interests. But do, is that true? Is that Puyuma interest only? I'm not, I'm not quite sure about that. I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, I will say that is for the all indigenous cultural, cultural issue. Okay, then basically the elected indigenous legislator regard himself as a representative of all indigenous peoples. Furthermore, although the issues concerned by indigenous the legislators may be influenced by constituency and the party affiliation, they are still they are still highly related to the indigenous interests. Indigenous legislators in Taiwan do respond to the need of the represented. Kai, so sorry, this is the base is the is the is the outline is the outline for the book chapter the the David asked me to write so basically in the future I will write in these four parts in the four parts I just come to I just share with you what is the, what is I may I may talk about in this in, in this book chapter and uh, thank you. Okay, that was um, that was fantastically exactly the kind of things that we're we're looking for in the uh, uh, in this book. So, um, okay, before I kind of go to the um, the uh, the, dis the questions at distance, let me just uh, raise one or two uh, uh, questions. Um, now, you've given us a clear picture of the way indigenous politics works at, at the at the national level, um, and I was wondering to what extent um, are the trends that you've described. Uh, also um, taking place at the local level. So, uh, okay, in, in November this year we'll have local level elections. Um, and not only will we have uh, uh, indigenous elections um, within the kind of the tribal areas, mm -hmm. but you'll also, for example, have um, indigenous uh, representatives elected in, let's say, city council or someone like Taipei, yeah. for example. Um, so, uh, there are the overall uh, voting behavior patterns similar mm -hmm. or um, to the national level? Okay, uh, about this part, just like I, do, just, I just mentioned, we have a metropolitan indigenous people. Mm -hmm. And uh, their voting behavior is basically they heavily influenced by their relatives still in tribe. Still in tribe. So it's also predictable. Huh, okay. It's also predictable. You just needed to win the candidate's name because it's public. 
then you start it, you can see which tribe he or she belong to. Mm -hmm. And his tribe has more people, with more people in Taipei. Okay. And then he will win. Mm -hmm. he will win. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so, um, uh, so if, okay, if we just take one case, Taipei City. Okay. Uh, the, and I guess in Taipei, maybe there's two indigenous councillors. I'm making a guess here. Uh, yeah, two come two. Um, and um, what is the general? Uh, why, is the, why is it definitely on this? Okay, right. The okay. other one will be Taiyang. Yeah. Okay, so so in, in this kind of district, then there's no mountain plain. Yeah, that is all, only for Taipei City. Okay. It's only for Taipei. They mm. don't have this kind of uh, this kind of. Uh, that is quite strange. Why Taipei City they don't have? Okay, so something like Gaoshan or Taichung or they do have because ah, they have okay. more than three cities. Ah, I see. Okay. Mm. Because they have more than three cities. Mm -hmm. So in Taiwan, that is uh, if we have, if we have, for any cities they have more than two thousand. Thousand five hundred, mm. two thousand five hundred indigenous people. Then you must reserve seat for indigenous for indigenous, mm -hmm. and uh, for so so only when only when the mountain indigenous people uh, vote us in that city, the number of land more than two thousand five hundred, mm -hmm. then they can have their own legislature. Uh, right. Sorry. They, they have their own seat. Okay, I see. And and to what extent um, do the does the behaviour of these politicians match that at the national level? So um, do they just again, as you've mentioned, in, with national legislators in, in the um, city council, do they just focus on indigenous issues, or do they uh, try and be broader representatives? Uh, basically the same. The same. Basically okay. the same. And <laughs> more. Okay. And maybe more ridiculous. Oh, okay. <laughs> Could you elaborate a bit on that? You know, for these city councillors, they only need a very few number of votes mm. okay. to win. Mm. For example, for the for the Taipei city, they may just need three hundred or four hundred <sighs> votes. Then you can win an election. Mm -hmm. So what is why did you need why you needed to care about others? All all you needed to do in your four year time, you just needed to visit each family. Mm -hmm. You just needed to each visit to meet each family and to present yourself on all occasions. <laughs> then you can secure your seat. Mm -hmm. Then you can secure your seat. Okay. So as long as you don't divorce. What? Okay? You don't divorce. And divorce. Divorce, yeah. divorce is very is very is very bad. Okay. Especially <laughs> if you are <laughs> because seventy percent of indigenous people they are Christian. They are Christian. Yeah. And if you divorce, if you divorce, you will be criticized by the church leader. That put your political career in danger. Mm, <laughs> I see. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> so it will be better if you want to join politics. Either you get married and don't divorce, mm. or you divorce before you. Before <laughs> you <laughs> divorce. Oh, okay, right. Okay. Okay. Um, okay um, I have the question from Taichung. I'm just going to ask one question. Yeah. And her question was, because um, uh, she did a, a, a master's thesis on um, electoral systems and gender. Uh -huh. So her question was, does the current electoral system of indigenous constituency favor indigenous female candidates? So uh -huh. is there a gender element uh, to the electoral system for... Um, um, no. Because the system is the in Taiwan, in Taiwan, mm. if the if the state if more than four seats, we will guarantee one seat yeah. for female. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, unfortunately for the for the central park level, we only have the three for <laughs> for each constituency. We only mm. have three three seats, so no guarantee, no guaranteed seat, no guaranteed seat for female. But for the local level, the gym, for local level, for, for local level, for the city councillors mm -hmm. uh, in Hualien and Taichung, in Hualien and Taichung, they do have some gender quota. Mm -hmm. But the general, uh, overall, overall, we don't overall because in the all other cities, mm -hmm. there we have only limited number of indigenous people. 
So they usually only have one or two seats reserved for indigenous. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and would you say that being a female candidate um, is a disadvantage? Because I mean, again, I, I can, uh, at the national level, I can only think of uh, okay, this, the um, um, this, the one famous case and the, the Chinese case uh -huh. mentioned. But overall, for uh, for voters, it, uh, would that be a, a disadvantage? Yeah, especially for uh, in mountain area, in mountain indigenous people. Yes. Okay. Traditionally, for Bruno, Daya, Sage, Dulugu, <coughs> females the status is lower, mm -hmm. is lower than male, is lower than male. And if you are female and you want to run for public office, usually you will be opposed by your family members. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, you are opposed by your family members. Because traditionally, uh, this, this tribe, this race, they, they think that female should not, should not, mm -hmm. uh, should not run for public office. And uh, you should stay at home. Ah. Right, so very patriarchal. Okay, uh, Ivan. Okay, well, um, uh, I'd like to focus on your split identity. Um, you, you, you say you have uh, another name, Dahu. Yep. yep. Now, um, and that this has enabled you to, to become accepted. Um, so this idea of acceptance into communities outside your own is something I find interesting. I studied Basque for a couple of years, uh, many years ago. And um, there's a certain uh, Basque town that I have visited many, many times. Um, there's a shop there that uh, I habitually go into. And for the first 10 years, I spoke French. And then one day, I don't know why, I decided I would go to the shop and I would speak in Basque. And the grandfather was, was there and he said to me, Oh, but you are Basque. And... If you're in the Basque country, you speak the Basque language, it is uh, it, it, it's a passport, okay? You're not a tourist. And also, I spent a lot of time in Korea, and a lot of people have said to me, a lot of Koreans have said to me, that Weiguk uh, Sarum, foreigners who have learnt Korean, are more easily accepted than returning overseas Koreans, especially if they cannot speak Korean. So, um, I'm wondering, can you speak an indigenous language? Has that been part of, yeah. of your uh, I can, process uh, of acceptance? I, I started to learn, I learned Sajak first. Mm -hmm. I, learned, I, I learned Sajak first, and uh, I learned some... I, I tried to... build at at language is very important. To be frank, language is very important. If you can speak an indigenous language, it's more easy. It's more easy for you to be accepted. Or you can, you can conduct your your interview. You can do your interview more convenient. But uh, that is difficult to me. To be very that is difficult. I don't have that environment to 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 use the to use that language. Use that language. So now I was, but to for in Taiwan in Taiwan now it's also a problem. Even for younger generation of indigenous people, they like can't speak. They can't speak indigenous language. So, so my disadvantage is that I can't. I can't speak indigenous language. But to be fair, that they don't care this too much because generally speaking, other young generation they can't speak that. But then I already show my ambition. I already show my willing. willing to, to learn that language. So every time when I go to the when go to the Eastern One family to visit the land, I definitely have one or two hours I will sit over there to learn the language. But usually they taught me to they, they teach me to think. To think a song. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm starting from that and uh, that is also difficult. Because I am not a good singer. I ah. <laughs> okay. So not anyway, but anyway, not okay. I I will stay over there. I will stay over there and uh, to show my work. I, I'm willing. I'm willing to learn this kind of language. Mm -hmm. So that is also easier to me to for me to be recognized. But uh, yes, if you can speak, if you can speak in this language for that child, that will be good. That will definitely be good. Okay, uh, be you. Oh. 
Thank you. Um, I'm interested to know, um, because you, you describe quite a lot of strategies um, that KMT actually build up the local connections and their network. Now, my question is, why did uh, KMT put so much energy into something such as so small a group of people? And it's not cost effective, so what's the motive behind it? Has it changed over the years, especially uh, since uh, they lost power? And how did they develop this strategy? Why other people didn't take it up? Okay. Uh, the KMT built this kind of the party organizations during the authoritarian time. And at that time, KMT was the only legal party. And the KMT was the casual party. So theoretically, all people in, on the island should support the KMT. And uh, the KMT live much more like the priest. So they sent it, they, the, at the very beginning, when they sent its coordinated on the, sorry, uh, uh, at the indigenous area, it's not just a, it's not for political purpose, sorry, it's not for election purpose. It's not for election purpose. They are going to supervise. Yeah, supervise or is more going to teach. They say they're going to teach indigenous people how to have a modern life. To have a modern life. And so they usually are teachers. They, they, these coordinators, at the very beginning, they were usually teachers. The primary school teachers or the principal of a primary school. They usually do this. So the purpose is not for, the original purpose is not for election. It's not for elect, uh, electoral mobilization, no. But during the, elec during the election, when the principal say, okay, we should support the KMT because they look after us, <laughs> then everyone say, oh yes, because you are, you are, you are the principals, and all our children is taught by you, what, what was what taught by you, and as long as you behave yourself. So, KMD also do that. If the coordinated, they don't behave in itself, the KMD will be pretty well dismiss this coordinator very quickly. Very quickly. Yeah. The, the, the teacher is the Han or they are indigenous people in the early time. In the early time, the early time, they they have, they some teachers that are Han people, but for for the KMD's education, that is part of the reason why KMT was so popular in, in this area. For each township, each township, every year, each township will have one vacancy, one vacancy reserved for indigenous children, uh, indigenous students. Mm -hmm. student. Basically, you don't need to pay anything. And uh, you, you do need to pass the exam. You do need to take the exam but the guarantee you will pass. It's guaranteed you will pass. So you will, you will be sent to the teacher school academy to accept the five years training, then you go back. And usually, a lot of, to be frank with you, a lot of indigenous families, their faith was changed, was, their faith was totally changed because one son become a teacher. Well, not become a teacher. Just like the, on the Tuesday, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. if you are you are serving in the army, you are military, you are police, you are a, you are a teacher. And the, the, and the social status of your entire fa your entire family social status will be raised. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I was going to bring up a point like that from my my experience in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Um, where during my lifetime um, there was a big transition when the uh, schools were no longer taught by missionaries and outsiders, but the first generation of graduate indigenous people um, were coming back to teach. And that was an enormous change in, in, in the indigenous society. By the way, you should copy Canada and call them the First Nation, which is the most admirable name, I think. Indigenous is, a, is an ugly thing. Shandi is not really uh, properly descriptive, but the Canadian um, 
indigenous are now called First the First Nation, which is a wonderful description. Yeah. Well, I know that because the First Nation is also, now we have an indigenous party in Taiwan called First Nation Party. Ah. And ah. Uh, I was invited to be uh, their member. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was invited, but okay, of course, there is a very weak, very small party. and. Uh, but yes, yeah. First Nations now is the least known. This has been introduced in the Taiwan. Yeah. One other thing, um, about a year ago in Taipei, the, um, the um, famous Breakfast Club uh, had a big um, daily meeting in the Leaf Hagen with representatives and press and everything. It was a magnificent meeting. And it was addressed by one of the Leaf Hagen people, whose name I'm afraid I've forgotten, who is putting through quite heavy legislation in favour of um, in, in favour of the First Nation, uh -huh. <laughs> and um, uh, so obviously Li Yuan is quite active in in legislation, uh -huh. and certainly was last year. Uh -huh. I wish I could remember the name of the representative. Who is it? Uh, First Nation person, very very effective speaker. Very very effective. Mm, I've got photos of her. Can't, can't, can't show you now. He or she? Hey. She. 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 Oh, she. Uh, oh. uh, Jivas Ali. Mm. Jivas, uh, Jivas Ali. Ali. Gao Jin Su Mei. Yeah. <laughs> Is that? Oh. She's very impressive. She is, uh, well, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I know. Yes, okay. She's very impressive. Yeah, well. Okay, yeah, okay. go ahead. Thank you, that was really, really interesting. Um, I'm personally very interested in citizen participation, uh -huh. um, and I learned a lot today. Um, and I noticed one thing that kind of, to me, seems a little bit of a um, kind of, that, yeah, um, it was a little bit ambivalent in your presentation. So you were saying that um, because indigenous MPs are usually seen by other MPs as just representing indigenous mm -hmm. issues, yeah they often are not heard, are not being given a voice on more general issues. You were saying cross-strait relationships yeah. and things like that. But on the other hand, you were saying they also, as legislators, don't really care about anything other than indigenous affairs. Yes. So my question is, is there um, a demand amongst indigenous legislators to, ch to, if they could, branch out into more general policy or do they really, are they really not interested in it at all? I think the basic, uh, for example, from the same party, uh, for KMD or DPP, uh, they have ordinary Han legislators, Han MP and the indigenous MP. For indigenous MPs, the, what do they care about? First of all, they want to sustain, they want to have, they want to be re-elected. Mm. They want to be re-elected. Re so who is your constituency? And if your paper or your your supporters, the, the potential your your potential supporters, they don't care about that. Mm -hmm. So why you why you look at why you care about other issues? Mm -hmm. And also and also the indigenous when the indigenous people they, I I do some interview with these indigenous MPs, they say we have so many things to do. Mm -hmm. We have to focus on indigenous issues, indigenous interests, because in the past, in the past the hundred years, indigenous was home. There's a lot of things needed to do. We can We should focus on this. Mm -hmm. So, one is the in, on the one hand, on, on the one hand, your party, your party don't care about this, and uh, and uh, you also want to you you want you also care about your own political career, political career. On the other hand, on the other hand, uh, it's too many things to do. Too many things you need to talk about. For example, for the education, education. Okay, well, of course, we can talk about general education. But do you know? I have a joke. Uh, indigenous, indigenous children in the primary school, and they take an exam. So the sun is is rise from the sea and uh, goes down. To another sea, right? To the, to the west, to the west, and uh, the indigenous children, in, indigenous uh, students say, "No. The sun was rise from the sea, but it burned into the mountain." 
That is actually what they daily see. They see this every day. They see this every day. But the, the teacher say, no, you get the wrong answer. You got the wrong answer. We use the Han education system. We, we, we put the Han education system on the dispute. And of course, they have the last educational achievement than us. So a lot, just like uh, just mentioned, uh, Jivas Ali and the other indigenous the MPs, they, they tried. They, 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 they worked very hard. They wanted to change this kind of this kind of educational system. They want to have their own educa indigenous educational educational system. But unfortunately, our Ministry of uh, Ministry of Education they refused to do so. Part of the reason is now we have a council of indigenous people. So indigenous, we have a council of indigenous peoples. And we also have a ministry of education. So who is going to look after? Who is going the indigenous education is under whose jurisdiction? Mm -hmm. Everyone is the everyone wants to say, okay, the money, the budget I want to, I want to get the, the budget, but I don't want to care about this part. This is the, the main problem. So, but the, for the Council of Indigenous Peoples, we propose, we propose, okay, the education, uh, edu we, we, education, educational budget goes to Council of Indigenous Peoples. And they say, no. They refuse to take this budget because they say we are not able to take, a, to, uh, to take, uh, to take care of this part. They don't have enough personnel. <coughs> they don't have enough manpower. They say so. They say so. Okay, yeah, uh, Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bong. I have two very short questions. Um, in your study, do you cover an issue about, uh, like, Taiwan, they ignore by elections that will be a direct factor to influence? their voting, vote, voting uh, intention? Yeah. And uh, another question, <laughs> and another question is, um, I was wondering and very curious about the, uh, the indigenous system, this voting system, uh, what is the original intention of Taiwan's government to build this system? Because there is still um, has many issues not re resolved. Okay. Uh, in year 2008, we have the electoral reform. We have an electoral, uh, we have an election reform, and it used to be for ordinary Han people. We, we we also adopt the same. We also implement the same electoral system. It's SNTB. But the year 2008, we, we change it. We change it. But the why did these people? In digital elections, we don't change it. That is because at the moment, let the MPs, they don't want to change. Once we have the, now the indigenous constituency, no matter you are mountain or plain indigenous, the entire island, the entire island is your constituency, geography, geography of your constituency. But if you, if you see that, if you see that, you can see we have a natural Constitution and division. <laughs> North part and central part and south part. But it, who is the strongest opponent? Who opposed who oppose at least the, the new electoral system? It's basically, we just mentioned Jibas Ali. Because uh, her supporters are spread all over another, another Taiwan. So she opposed. She opposed it. But the KMT would like to cooperate. KMT need Chivas Ali's vote. DPP also want. So they just delay, they just postpone this proposal and they don't touch it. They don't touch it. So this is not because we don't want to we don't want to have a new electoral system. That is because of some so it's basically just political interest. Then. Yeah, it's political, political interest. Mm. 
Okay, um, on that note then, I think we can continue our discussion over some, uh, some wine. So let's uh, thank Professor Bao one more time. And <laughs> look forward to the uh, chapter.